Everything Everywhere All at Once is a movie where alternate reality versions of the characters have hot dogs for fingers. It's a movie where people do martial arts with butt plugs firmly lodged in their b-holes. It's also one of the most beautiful new films to come along in years, both visually and emotionally. I'm not joking when I say this movie made me cry with its heartfelt, sincere devotion to human kindness and its stalwart resistance to nihilism. But let's set this up. The plot is that a Chinese couple, played by Michelle Yeoh and Kei Kwan, who own a laundromat, are not leading their best lives. Evelyn Wang is unsatisfied with existence, annoyed by her husband and her overbearing traditionalist father, played by the great James Hong, who's hilarious in this film. And she just has terrible communication skills that are ruining her relationship with her daughter. So during a visit to Jamie Lee Curtis over at the IRS building, Evelyn gets sucked into a ridiculous, rip-roaring, kung-fu, matrix-style adventure that taps into different timelines and universes, wherein she is the only hope for all of reality not to get sucked into the literal everything bagel that symbolizes postmodern nihilism? It's fucking wild. And that's all the summary I'm gonna give, because honestly, you just need to see this movie. It's also a movie that's well titled, because it's a film that has every tone. It's a Jackie Chan style action comedy, it's a bonkers sci fi premise, it's a touching family drama about the importance of connection and love as a way of pulling people back from the void of negativism. And it also functions as a very personal meditation on the paths that life can take you on. With all this, you would sort of expect the movie to be a mess, and it sort of is, but it's a glorious mess, and it balances all of these elements nearly perfectly. There was definitely a point around the halfway mark where the goofiness started to wear me down a bit, and I wasn't sure what direction the movie was going. I was a little bit worried that the reason people were talking about it was just because it was ridiculous, like Kung Fu Hustle. But then the film settles down and transforms in the third act into a beautiful flourish of emotionality. Still silly, you have hot dog fingers and butt plugs, but goddamn, when Wayman Wang delivers his monologue about the importance of being kind, that was the moment where tears were streaming down my face like a little babby. What I really want to communicate beyond anything else though, is the way that these elements act as an argument or response against the ennui or nihilism or negativism, whatever you want to call it, that is so pervasive today. Not just in art, but within our existence. We live in a paradigm of depression and anxiety and with so much information and media at our fingertips at all times, a lot of us feel paralyzed by the way we interact with the world. I mean, as William Wordsworth said, the world is too much with us, and that's never been more true. It often feels like we're dealing with everything everywhere all at once, from climate catastrophe to plague to wars and shortages, and the fucking infinity of commentary and content and bullshit of the online world, and it is stressful. It's stressful. That everything bagel is right there, staring us in the face. And that fucker has some gravitational pull. So how do you get away from it? Where's the beauty? That's where the monologue from Kei Kwan comes in, from Waymond Wang, about the importance of being kind. He chooses to be kind even though the world is hard and life can be bitter. It's a defense mechanism that allows him to survive. And it is this very message that transforms the negative spiral at the heart of the film into a weapon against despair. Communicated with Evelyn, kindness becomes a martial art and the cycle of despair is broken. It's one of the greatest endings in modern cinema. The film doesn't just preach a message of kindness, right? Plenty of movies do that. Instead, it channels the bleak anxiety of a generation and transforms it, ultimately arriving at a beautiful response. There are a million other things we could talk about when it comes to this movie, from the amazing performances, the wonderful effects that were done by a very small team, uh, the multifarious nods and allusions to other great movies throughout history, 
but I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully I've communicated in my own messy way, at least in part, why this is my favorite film of the year so far. Maybe multiple years. If you'd like to hear an extended discussion, head on over to the Real Weirdos channel, where Alex A. Bear and I dissect it from head to toe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.